Well, it's 400 years since Shakespeare died. He died, we think, at age 52, which now, uh, personally, looks pretty young. And the closer one gets to that age, the more one realises just how much the writer crammed into such a short life. His plays are littered with deaths, uh, the tragedies, the histories, the comedies, and the great variety in which he presents mortality is, I find, comforting, encouraging, illuminating. It's all those things, and, uh, but never really fundamentally depressing. It's uplifting because he understands what it means to live, to love, and also to die. Yes, um, I think he gets a little bit less, uh, a little bit more squeamish about death as, as, <laughs> as he gets older, as the plays go on, doesn't he? You know, as he's a young man, he writes these much more violent, gory departures for some of his characters. I think you think of an early play like Titus Andronicus, where um, which is deeply unpleasant in many ways, and um, the characters Cameron and Demetrius are served up in a pie uh, to their own mother, who who, who eats them, uh, and and that kind of you know sensational goriness tends to ease off a little bit in the later plays, which become um, perhaps a little bit less um, salacious in that sense. I was thinking about this theme, um, I was struck by Lear's phrase um, about his hand smelling of mortality. Yeah. Do you remember that? And uh, I thought that's just what is so wonderful about the way Shakespeare treats death is that you have that mixture of life and death. Of course, we are all dying. Mm. Um, and he illuminates that idea, but also the idea of the gory, the final death. I know we're all going to uh, talk about our favourite deaths a bit later on, um, but I think that um, that way of encapsulating how life and death exist together, he does so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's that beautiful moment in Richard II um, where the phrase the hollow crown comes from you know where, where Richard sits down and he realizes he's losing everything and he talks about the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king and it's that notion for a king and there are so many kings in the play you know that, that the crown is is artificial and that within that empty space um, there is a, a mortal human being who's very frail and he, and he always reminds us of how fragile and frail our own mortality is, doesn't he? Do you ever find that depressing? It's something I, I just mentioned when I was talking. Do you find that his, that this uh, ubiquitous theme in, in every play, death, at the time, death was visceral, it was, it was real, it was there. Shakespeare experienced it himself with his children, his family. Um, uh, you know, 52 was a good age then. Yeah. Uh, so do you find that depressing? Are we able to understand death better through Shakespeare, or does it remain bleak and dark? I think it depends on the play, really. I think it's quite difficult to generalise, but I think you're, you're quite right, the sense that death is omnipresent um, comes across in Shakespeare very strongly. I mean, after all, people died of disease, they died of violence, didn't they? Um, the, the burial grounds were just were very close by in the city of mm. London when they you could you could smell them mm. um, nowadays we've sanitized death we've pushed it away and when you read a Shakespeare play it's it's back in focus I think mm. isn't it mm.